speech and contra, I move that we recognize Senator Lauren Legarda. Senator Lauren Legarda is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I was tasked by the Minority Leader to deliver the uh, assessment of 2008 budget in behalf of the Senate Minority. But before that, Mr. President, we would like to commend the Chair of the Finance Committee of the Senate for painstakingly and ably shepherding the budget deliberations for the past several weeks, if not months. Also, our congratulations to the Vice Chairpersons of the committees, namely Senators Arroyo, Angara, and Santiago, for competently facilitating the enlightened discussions. In behalf, therefore, of the Senate minority, I would like to present our assessment of a 2008 budget. Mr. President, the year 2007 is drawing to a close. It is a tumultuous year characterized by unresolved bombings in two of the most sensitive areas of Metro Manila, Makati and the Batasang Pambansa. Just a little over a week ago, the entire country was gripped by tension as another threatening event occurred in the Manila Peninsula Hotel. The reverberations from that incident have not sufficiently quieted down. The Senate is especially concerned because it involves a member of this august body. Mr. President, the economy also had its share of tumult. The peso continues to strengthen, thereby affecting the purchasing power of millions of Filipinos who are dependent on OFW remittances for survival. At the same time, the price of oil has shot up, affecting public transport fares, gasoline prices, and the cost of delivering public goods and services for the poor. On the fiscal side, actual revenue collection is way behind programmed collection. The burgeoning deficit is only held in check by continuous privatization activity and underspending for government services. The government was not spared from these scandals. In quick succession, we had the ZTE imbroglio, which led to the resignation of a constitutional official, the public distribution of gift bags bulging with bills amounting to 500,000 pesos each, questions on the series of privatization, deals of the government, the deferment of the World Bank-sponsored road projects, and so on, ad nauseum. To the credit of the Senate, public hearings were held. The hearings proved to be powerful mechanisms for informing the public on governance issues. However, Mr. President, the most serious challenge which we are facing as 2007 comes to an end is a pernicious problem of poverty. The Midterm Progress Report on the, medium, or the Millennium Development Goals for 2007 states that 26 million Filipinos, or 30% of our population, live below the poverty threshold. This is nearly a third of a total Filipino population, Mr. President. The basis of the official count of the poor is the assumption that the poverty threshold is 40.73 per person per day, 40 pesos per day, Mr. President, to cover both food and non-food requirements. I am sure that the distinguished members of this body and those in the hall today could not imagine how a person can actually survive on 40 pesos a day for all his or her needs. The official MDG progress report also notes that out of the 17 regions in the country, only three regions, namely Central Luzon, Calabar Zone and the National Capital Region have household poverty rates less than the national average. The remaining 14 regions have poverty rates exceeding the national average, with Caraga, Arm, and Region 9 topping the list. Mr. President, malnutrition and hunger are also urgent problems among our people. The same report states that 56.9%, more than half of the population, are getting less than 100% of all needed dietary requirements. Hunger is particularly high in two very sensitive and volatile regions of our country, here in the National Capital Region and the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. As we all know, poverty and malnutrition are directly related to education and health, particularly infant and maternal mortality. No, Mr. President, the Senate cannot just blithely ignore the fact that the problem of poverty remains as intractable as ever. As senators directly elected on a national scale, we have a responsibility to respond to this daunting challenge, not only individually, but as a Senate in its entirety. Yes, Mr. President, the Senate faces a challenge 
and opportunity for poverty alleviation. And the most powerful tool at our disposal, Mr. President, is a national budget. Today, Mr. President, the Senate is putting its final touches to our version of a 2008 budget. We have gone through the traditional exercise of committee hearings, reports, debates. We cannot, however, treat this process as business as usual. The bottom line question we should ask, Mr. President, is will the Senate version of a 2008 budget impact directly on the reduction and alleviation of poverty? Will it actually allocate funds sufficient to reach the target set forth in the Millennium Development Goals? Mr. President, the 2008 budget proposed by the Office of the President and endorsed by the Senate Committee on Finance is premised on the achievement of a balanced budget. This is the framework of a total 1.2 trillion proposal. That's in pesos, of course. When the 2008 budget was presented to the House, the Secretary of Budget and Management was quoted as saying, and I quote, it will be an outlay that will be totally supported by internal revenues. By proposing a budget which would not be propped up by a single borrowed peso, we are taking a bold step towards an era of balanced budgets. Mr. President, the two questions that can be raised with regards to the 2000 budget. The first is, can the promised balanced budget actually be attained? If the Honorable Senators will assess the fiscal picture in 2007, the possibility actually appears to be dismal for 2008. I already mentioned that shortfalls in tax revenue collection vis-a-vis -vis targets have been building up for the past three quarters of 2007. So far, shortfalls in tax collections reached 56 billion pesos, with the BAR posting 44.9 billion below target and the Bureau of Customs 12 billion pesos below target as well. Shortfalls for the last quarter are not yet included. Even as shortfalls are accumulating, reductions in a deficit are also reported. So how was the de deficit managed? The deficit was controlled by an increase in the Bureau of Treasury income, by privatization, by selling our crown jewels, and underspending in expenditures mostly social in nature. During the past three quarters, there was underspending by 38.6 billion pesos. If there was underspending, it is likely that social expenditures were greatly affected. The answer to the first question, therefore, Mr. President, is that the much-awaited balanced budget may not be attained. The second question is, granting without admitting that the balanced budget can be attained, what will the impact be on poverty reduction? Mr. President, a balanced budget can be attained by underspending and by resorting to a frenzied privatization of our country's assets. The danger is that spending for poverty reduction, education, health, the reduction of infant and maternal mortality, agriculture, gender equality, and the environment could be sacrificed. This has happened before. It can, perhaps will, happen again. Mr. President, all of us are aware of the estimates made by Dr. Rosario Manansan of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies on resource gaps for MDGs until 2015. Her latest calculation is that for education, health, water and sanitation, and poverty reduction, additional resources of 94.9 billion pesos will be needed for next year alone, 2008. It is clear that instead of cutting the budget for social expenditures for the sake